as a red talk show we up here at uh eaton filling station this morning early and uh I was talking to some guys, the owners, but then I seen that one of the customers was up here, and uh, he was talking to somebody, but we don't want to tell it until after we show it, okay? Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. Oh, hold on. Hey, y'all, be quiet. Come out. You tell me come out. Watch me talk. I'm at Big Jim. Go back in? I go back inside now. Did you uh, 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 hold, hold on. Wow. Look, hold on now. Okay. Look at here, big big Jim. We got to go make some money now. We well, let's go get some can. Come here. Get this can. Come here. Come here. Get that can. Get it. Get that can. Wait a minute, he won't. Get that can. Go, go put it on the truck. What? Put it on the truck. He done put it in his house. Yeah. Now, that's all right. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he obedient. We wives don't even do that when they say something. Wow, did you see that dog listen to him? He called him out. He'll come get a can. We got to go make some money. he get a can. He know he going to get his gravy train or steak tonight, whatever he eating. I hope that you all enjoyed this. And this is a, a work better, man. What's your name, sir? Jimmy King. Jimmy King. Is you camera shy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he camera shy, but he worked at the shipyard how many years? 15, 20, 21 years. 21 years, and he retired, and, and he, you know, I seen an ad in the paper the other day. It was in the shop ad. This man said, wife and dog missing. It said, reward for dog. Now I see why they do that. Them folks love, them men love their dog. Lord have mercy. I hope that you all enjoy that. Them dogs understand you when you feed them and take care of them. God bless you here. Jazz Red, we love you. Peace. Jazz Red Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazz Red. And, uh... This man here is uh, Bishop Cornelius Woods, and he's a business owner. But uh, he's going to say the opening prayer for the show, because we show sure need prayer, Bishop Woods. There's so much going on. Look like a policeman is killing a black man every, it was monthly, weekly, not daily. It's going daily, so we, we really need prayer. We, I don't understand. I know once the devil get in and set up, he manifests. But some of them act like they brainwashed or uh, been hip, hypnotized to shoot people. I don't understand that. I don't see how that is going on. With so much shooting, how is they study pulling that trigger? But we're going to want you to say a prayer about it because uh, we need prayer. Bad. We pray today for our country. We pray that the Lord will have his way. That our young men stop being murdered in the street. We pray that justice is done in remembrance of those that have lost their lives. We pray today that God will move upon this land that seemed like a demon has been leashed to destroy our black men. We pray today that God will send his guardian angels to protect us as we travel to and for. We pray today that the Ku Klux Klan don't destroy our people. We pray today that our boys won't be shot down like dogs. We pray because we know without prayer we can't make it. Father God, we come today in humble submission, asking you, God, to move upon this land. Oh, God, we ask you to move the trouble. We ask you to move every hinder against your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm uh, jazz a little blown away that every... Every day in, in mm -hmm. Facebook I'm getting, and people are sending me stuff, because you know Jazz has had this show six years, and we've really, we've really have gotten, got out there. Uh, how dare 
you shoot someone and and you can you think you can go on man i mean you think you can go on you see them folks at night jazz are telling you people call me tell me they see them now some 51 to move that off for you but y'all gotta stop don't just pull a gun then something happened most of the policemen are saying wow or, or cussing they uh I, I didn't try to do it or, or go to crying, some of them. And some of them, they ain't got no remorse. But you see them at night. So what we want to do is uh, we got to stop, man. This got to go away. It's got to go away, bitch. Yeah, it it got to stop now. It got to stop now because some things are escalating. And I had told in my book and I had met with the police years ago. It's too much. Wow. Wow. 50 years after birth, Ku Klux Klan dream of rising again. Wow. This is what the press register say. Oh, wow. The Ku Klux Klan is on the rise again. Wow. This is this is last week's press register. Wow. Press register did a little research on that. They wow. They know that it's something happening in America. Hmm. They know that it's trouble in America. My sisters and my brothers, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. No, we will not go back. We will not allow this to happen in America again. This will not happen because we're going to stand for justice. We're going to stand for righteousness. We're going to stand because God is God and besides him there's none other. My brothers, my sisters, I told the young men in my church, I said when the police come and they come to you, you just Sit there, say yes, sir, no, sir, don't try to be arrogant, don't say anything, because you don't want to be killed. Yeah, but you know what? You know what a guy, young guy told him this lad, we little young guy in Mississippi, he said, Miss Red, they're going to kill us if our hands down or if our hands up. they just going to kill us anyway. I said, that is not the way it's supposed to go. But that's what they're feeling, Bishop. Mm-hmm. They're feeling that even if they do right, they're still going to get shot. So you know it's gonna be, they need to quit because people are going to start acting out. Taking matters into their own hands. When I saw the health care worker lying on the ground with his hands up and his patient sitting at his feet and the officer shot him with his hands up, said, don't shoot me. What's going on in America today? And And one of the policemen asked him, why did you shoot him? He said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So that means it's something making them do that. Don't shoot me because I'm black. Thank you. Don't hurt me because I'm black. Because you see a black man, you don't have to fear me because I'm black. There are many of us that are not violent. Because my skin is dark does not mean that I'm violent. Does not mean that I'm militant. That there are God-fearing men that are black, that are out here in America. Young men, I tell you today, pull your pants up. Young men, look like gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Young ladies, pull your dresses down. We are not ghetto people. We are lawyers, we are doctors, we are preachers, we are maids, we are janitors, but we are somebody. I am somebody. I may be black, but I am somebody. That's right. I may be poor, but I am somebody. I'm some mother's child. My mother loved me like you love your children. People, it's time for us to get together. That's right. In every city I've seen across America, people have been protesting because of the way blacks have been treated. But right here in Mobile, Alabama, in the city that I was born and I was reared in, we got to come together. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I know what they do, see. They are, they are wrestle a big black man down. This is wrong. And you're going to tell something in his ear. You're going to call him all kind of names. And, and you know that especially the young black guys, they, they ain't going to want to take that. So while they wrestling, they started talking to him and telling him things in the ear. And these kids are wrestling because of the way they're getting talked to. So you don't let anybody call you names and, and tell you things and you uh, act out in that. But I, it is a bad thing that is going on. Now, this got to go away. It's acknowledged. Everybody see it. And I, I have white friends. Black friend, white friends that don't even like KKK, okay? Mm-hmm. 
you know, I used to think that all whites liked the KKK. Mm-hmm. I was in the 70s, I was riding a guy to work, and uh, the KKK was out there taking up a collection. They didn't have a sheet on it, and so the guy said, you want to give it to the organization? The, the, the Cajun guy in my car said, what's the name of the organization? He said, the Knights of the Crew Clan or something. He called it that kind of way. He said, y'all, the KKK, he, he pulled a gun. I said, pull off, Red, pull off before I kill him. I said, I thought you wanted to give him some money. You, He said, I'm not into that. I'm not down with that. So a lot of people that are not with them, but they are recruiting online and everything. And that's a bad thing. Why are they boosting this up? Why are they boosting it up? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a lot of evenness going on. If people don't pray, if people don't pray, the devil will devour the land. And the only thing that's going to help us is that we pray The only thing that's going to help us is that when we see trouble reported, when we see drugs being sold in our neighborhood, dial 911. When we see things that are happening that is not right in our neighborhood, don't just sit there and just let it go on. That's right. Uh, We have good neighborhoods in our communities. There are good people live in Plateau. There are good people live in Pritchard. There are good people that live in Trinity Garden, but just because we live in an impoverished area does not mean that there are not good people there. And we want our neighborhoods to be safe. We want our neighborhoods to be where you can walk down the street. And I admonish everyone that's listening under the sound of my voice. When you see trouble, call and report it. Don't just go down the street and just say, oh, I don't care, I'm not getting involved. It's important to us as a people that some of us can't afford to live in exclusive neighborhoods. Some of us can just afford regular neighborhoods. So we're not going to let people come in our neighborhoods with drugs. We're not going to let people come in our neighborhood with prostitution. We're not going to allow people to come there and defame our neighborhoods. And I say to our city councilman, in every district we have in the Mobile County, think about us. Think about us. People are fighting now saying they want a soccer field. Well, A soccer field, and right in front of my house is a big ditch. You know, people saying a soccer field, and in our neighborhoods, we don't even have sidewalks. I think it's important that some of this money be spent on things that to help us to improve our neighborhoods. A soccer field won't improve our neighborhood. But covering those ditches in front of my house will. Cover those ditches in front of my church will. Let's think about the things that help upgrade our neighborhood that many of us don't play soccer so we need we need ditches covered (laughs) well priorities we definitely need to deal with our priorities uh this has got to go away we're gonna pray on and we're gonna be working on it and jazz is just uh i I put a lot into this show i don't get a lot of sleep bitch we would pray for me we work a seven day but i'm still gonna put this show on because god told me to to help folks and to do this Mm -hmm. but this has got to go away it's got to go away. So I want to uh, tell them about your business. Uh, business. Well, my business is Memorial Funeral Home, a business that God gave me to help his people. We don't care whether you're rich or poor. We don't just bury poor people. We bury anybody that God sends. There are people in our neighborhoods that need someone that's concerned about them. At Memorial Funeral Home, we try and help you. We don't guard you. Uh, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't give you these high prices and things. We we don't do that because God told me to help the people. But the Bible says that the poor will be with you always. And it's a strange thing, you know, uh, uh, Jazzy. Sometimes, you know, I help people and uh, I bury them. They don't have anything, and I look in the paper when they got some money, they go somewhere else. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I deal with that. I deal with that a lot. And then when they're poor again, they don't have anything. Uh, they have somebody don't have insurance. They call me and ask for help. That's bad. And we got to learn to help one another. We got to remember where we came from. That's right. You know, I heard uh, Maya Angelo said, we raise their babies. And when the babies get up, they call us gal. 
She said, we picked the fruit and we couldn't eat the fruit. She said that we raised the chickens and we had to eat the feet. She said, we raised the pigs. We had to eat the feet and the tails. But I want you to know today, we've helped, we've taught. Who was the first teacher for some of these rich people? Was the nanny, was the maid. She taught them how to walk. She taught them how to talk. And they would slap her in the face. They would give her the straps. But we've come a long ways now. We've come a long, but we yet got a long way to come. I tell my young people, I tell the young people, and people don't like to hear me say this, go to school or go to trade school, learn a trade or learn. And I'll tell you, you need to learn about computers because everything is computerized now. Go to school that you can have a good job. My mama said to me once, and I felt bad about it, she said to me, she said, son, I want you to do better than me. She said, I want you to have a better house than me. I want you to have a better car. I said, no, mama, I don't want to be better than you. She said, but you got a better opportunity. Okay. You got a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. Young people, you have a better opportunity than we had. We had a better opportunity than our parents had. So you should do better. That's right. That's right. Do better. Don't go around having babies, 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 babies. Huh? Try to get something for yourself. That's right. Try and educate yourself that you'll be able to take care of someone. I, hear, I heard a young lady in my church say, she said, I'm trying to find me a man with a good job to take care of me. No. 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 That's why I'm saying no, today, no, man. Uh, that badge and uh, go to work. Go to work. No man really want no woman. They ain't really <laughs> got nothing going on. Uh, I know y'all read a lot of those love novels. Get off of them things for a minute, okay? It's fantasy. It's not real. It's not real. I wish somebody would whisk over in the shipyard on a horse, Mm -hmm. throw his dread back (laughs) on the back of that white horse, ride off the sunset. Uh, It ain't happening because the horse can't get in there and he got to have a band to get through the (laughs) turns. Yeah, it ain't happening. Stop reading that stuff, man. Read Uh some black history books. Read some Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington. Death in 60 Days. Paulette Harden wrote that where Mm -hmm. uh, Booker T. Washington was murdered. Uh, he had high blood pressure, but he it was induced through pause. Start reading some history books, please. Read. All right, know that. See where we came from. We love you, and if any way we can help you, know why I help y'all young girls, don't you? Because I know how it is. I had it hard, man. Water, light, gas, you just get cut off. <laughs> I went through so much, so I understand. That's why I try to help you, because I ain't want no man to around. Well, yeah, if I get your gas on there, I'm going to cut it off. You make me, oh, I'm going to have that in my own name, bro. Okay? <laughs> I don't do that. Amen. So we got to get it together. Get it we together. love you, little sisters. Together. We love you. I love my brothers. I love Bitch Wood. I love, I love my people, man. Some of them think they slick sometimes, but I, I love my people. I want y'all to get it together, okay? All right. We're going to say. God bless you. And Jazz Red. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you drop my mic in the back. That's my mic. I'm give me some super glue. Jazz Red, we love you. Jazz Red talk show. Uh, I wanted to zoom in. I wanted the kids to see this. Uh, this is a setup here, okay, of our people picking cotton. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. And look at look at her, look at her, with the Angie Mama thing on, and she got a cotton by uh, Mama been dirty. She been in the field a little bit. Wow! But I'ma sit this on that stool. I wanted y'all to. Sh- I wanted to show you a dipper. You know, every 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 week, Jazz will do a trip back in town. But we all right, camera, don't do that. Stay right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, camera. All right, we're gonna show you a dipper here. This is what you got some water. You went in that well. And you dip that. That's how you got some water, okay? This is a dipper, kids, okay? This is a dipper. Now you know what a dipper was called. If you wanted some water, they go in that wheel and they get that with that. And that was a, a trip back in time with the dipper. Y'all done come a long ways, okay? Remember what the dipper looked like, young folk.
Y'all got it a whole lot better now. You can just turn that faucet on and get some water. I want you to start being thankful. Don't just be thankful for expensive tennis shoes and y'all stop running out to that mall, knocking each other down for shoes and fighting over tennis shoes. Okay? We've come a long way. They've got shoes. Why are you running and fighting? All right? Jazzeria, we love you. Peace out. Jazzeria Talk Show. We're here at Fat Boys Diner. Mm-mm. But I was so hungry, I said, where am I going to eat? And a girl that worked at that family doll at 45, she said, Red, I just left from Fat Boy. He got red bean. He got pork chop. He got chicken wing. He got everything. Wow. Fat Boys. Fat Boy, yeah. He even got a dining room, baby. He got it going on. Now, he got Kool-Aid, soul food. All right. Now, we're going to... Let me go in here and get somebody to come out here and say something about this, this place of business. Y'all seen him been on before. Jazz Red, peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show. They finna talk, baby. Baby, you know I catch the devil with these women when I put them on. You better tell about Fat Boys Restaurant. Tell me. Fat Bars are a seven-day business. We are open from Mondays through Sundays. Our hours are 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. We sell soul food. We have sandwiches, all breakfast, um, cakes, desserts, anything you would like to drink. Um, we also do call-in orders to speed up the process if you don't like waiting long. And, you know, we, we, we sell a lot of things. I'm going to let Miss Katrina go ahead and tell you some of the things that we sell on our hot bar. We sell barbecue. We sell potato salad. We sell big beans, macaroni and cheese, the best in Alabama. Y'all come and enjoy it. Come get some of the fried chicken, smothered chicken. And we have mashed potatoes and anything that you want. Come get some of our southern style food today. <laughs> tell you why I thank them. Come back in here. So let me tell you why I thank I want to thank Fat Boy because Fat Boy, I gave a, a horse ride for kids about four years ago and Fat Boy donated buns and wings. He did a lot. So I just appreciate you Fat Boy for what you're doing and so I had, took so long to come back. Y'all know y'all got to say, don't you? Jazz Red, peace out. Jazz Red, peace out. All right. I catch the devil with these women, girl. I'm telling Jazz Red, we up here at E&J Auto and y'all know I have a different commercial every week if i go to him i sweat and do this when we come back we're gonna come with the, one of the owners here jazz red we love you peace out and i'm showing you this is another commercial because see y'all know i didn't do no calls or nothing i'm telling you they fixing up some things jazz red we love you peace out we're e and j auto repair 2251 costa readers telephone number is 479-1317 up here we do all kind of repairs we do paint body work we do mechanic work uh you name it we do it come by and see us we're at e and j auto repair 2251 costa readers and uh they do all my work on my, don't move, man, don't move, don't make me get you, man. All right, they do all the work on my old school car and my new stuff. I bring stuff up here for them to paint, and I uh, thank you for the paint job. Somebody hit my car, and it looks great. He said, I'm going to wet set and buff it. I was looking like, give me my car. He did it, though. He gave it to me because I had to go to work. So they can, uh, he can paint, he can sand, he can do whatever you need. Uh, and that Baker, I know you're looking. This the man I was telling you about. I can do that carriage for you. Cause I, we had that carriage when we were kids. Thank you for letting me ride in your car. It looked like a car. It's a car, all right, with the pedals and a steering wheel. But you'll see it once you get it together. Thank you, Adnett Baker. All right, give them that phone number and the address again. We're at E&J Auto Repair, 2251 Costa Rita's. Telephone number is 251-479-1317. Peace out. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show. I'm in here making this young man may, uh, for laugh. <laughs> All right, we've got an important dignitary that has a public announcement for you, ladies and gents. And uh, it's uh, for the kids. They're doing something for the kids. Uh, give them your name and uh, you tell them what's going on. You see, he got his blunt. I don't know, Prisoner took over my show this week. Here you go, young man. Tell them your name. <laughs> my name is Tony Harrison. Uh, I'm, here, I'm here to let y'all know about the uh, our annual Back to School Festival we have every year. And it's uh, August the 6th. It's going to be August the 6th at the uh, Old Blunt site. And uh, all kids are welcome. What Refreshments, time? everything starts at uh, 7 o'clock that morning. Wow. 7 o'clock. And um thing about it, the giveaways is going to be at, we'll give those the backpacks and everything out at 3 o'clock. Okay. So, but I guess around 10, 11, 12, you know, be good. You come out, get registered. That's the main thing. Come out and get registered, get an armband. 
That way you have your armband on because you can't get a book bag in school supply without your armband. So parents, make sure you get your kids out, get them registered. That way, when I say register, go ahead and all we want is the names and what school you're from, what ages you are, okay. that sort of thing. So, what's uh, the ages? What is the age? Or what grades? Well, it's from uh, middle school. It's uh, elementary and middle school. Okay. It's what we ask. You know, we give the uh, backpacks to. You know, just a fun field day. A lot of the uh, Blunt and Viga alumni will be there this year. And uh, Blunt Band, Viga Band, you know, it's going to be a, a, a nice event. A lot of refreshment for the kids, space walks, and everything, what have you. A lot of, yes, we have people singing, dancing, uh, doing a positive uh, spoken word, that sort of thing. So uh, it should be great this year. You know, it was a big success last year. Food. Food, you know, we got hot dogs and uh, water and everything for the kids. Okay. That way, and uh, each individual class will be cooking out. We got all kind of uh, cooking competitions going on this year. So uh, wow. it should be great, you know, this year. So we welcome everybody to come out. Kids got you know we got refreshments everything for you, we uh we got Corvette clubs we got oh, the what? motorcycles and everything. No. So uh yeah we we doing the big this year. Y'all doing the big this year. That's God. Saturday August the sixth at, at the old Blunt High School. That's eight thirty eight West Main Street. So uh come out and um, just enjoy it. back to school and everything. Get the kids ready for back to school and uh we'll be. We'll be out there ready. How many years? How many years? I've, I've Six. filled them before. You all that been watching my show, yeah, I know they've been on. So how long? How many years y'all been? This will be our sixth year. We'll Six be doing years. the uh, hosting the back to school festival, and this year the Blunt Viga going to be with us as well, and the uh, winning uh, men and women in Christ. So uh, they'll oh, yeah, oh yeah, the men and woods, that woods lady. Yeah, to wow. find the woods. So there's men and women in Christ, Blunt and Viga, band, everybody. We actually, you know, we got. Principal coming out to speak to the kids about everything that's going on in the community these days. You know, it's a lot going on, so um, you know, just come on out and be a be a part of something positive. And um, so we'll just, yeah. yes, yeah. So they got to come and, and on time. They need to be to express that time that they need to come to get well, their arm band to get registered. Register registration start normally at eleven o'clock, between okay. eleven twelve, sort of like that. So just come on out and make sure you're on time and just. It's first come, first serve. Last year we gave out over 700 book packs. Wow. Filled with paper, pencils, pens, all that sort of thing. So, uh, and this year we've already raised up enough to get, I know, over, well, over 500. Yeah. So, uh. Now, what if, uh, what if somebody wanted to contribute? Uh, water, a school supply? What about your phone number? Can you give us a phone number? My, my number is, uh, area code 251 that's my number, 423-2574. It's area code 251. And if you want to contribute, like we're asking each class from Blunt High School to donate $100 toward this event every year, and, and as well as Viagra. So um, we about out, we about, we sold a lot of the uh, tent spaces and everything out. So uh, you know it's going to be a lot of people out. Yeah. And um, and just to throw out there, just in case it rains, you know, and, and good God willing, hope we're not, it's going to be the uh, backup plan is the uh, Bill Clark Center. We'll continue on with the Bill Clark Center if it rains. Where is that located? That's right down the street, right down Main Street. Well, you'll tell everybody. Yes. We don't want to get everybody tripped up. That's right. They come to uh, yeah. come to you all site first. That's right. Come to our site first, and we'll direct you. We'll have signs that if it rains. We so hope it don't. that's the backup plan. So we'll go down there. We'll just give the uh, backpack side as um, you know, it's a backup plan. So we got that in place. So, uh, but we're looking forward to a lot of people come out, support the community, and everything. Support this event, so we we welcome to have you. Yeah, them old blunt. They, you can meet all your <laughs> friends. A lot of people coming in. You know, some folk might come in town. For yeah. This. Oh yeah. Wow. So, all right. Uh, let's get that phone number again for the backpack in case you all want to uh, contribute. Yeah. Give something to the kids. Give your phone number out again. It's uh two five one four two three two five seven four. That's my cell number. So uh, call us. Anyway, we, we meet tomorrow over at the school, at the alumni hall. That's tomorrow at 630. No, well, they ain't going to see this till Saturday. Y'all yeah. going to mix. So, yeah. Fred, you're going to make me get you, man. <laughs> they ain't going to be good, but that's why I'll you out. This going to have Saturday, so All right. y'all will be done already mixed. Okay. But uh, the, the giveaway will be next Saturday. Yeah. Not this Saturday, be next Saturday. Okay. That's so good. next Saturday will be the giveaway. Yeah. Give them the date again. That's August 6th at uh, 838 West Main Street. That's uh, Pritchett, Alabama. We'll be doing it big. The Blunt and Viger Alumni Association, along with the uh, men and women in Christ, we'll be doing it big. So we're asking everybody to come out to the community to come out and support this event. 
And uh, we, we look forward to having you. All right. Now, Jazz will work some, David. Jazz is going to take off that Saturday. But I'm going to be running up in there Sunday. All right. We're going we're gonna to do this for the kids, man. I'm going to take off that Saturday. And I'm coming. And uh, I'm bringing my camera. And a lot of permission slips. We've got to do something about that. i got to have, you know, somebody to sign where I can, you know, I'll talk to you about that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Jazz of Red. We can't leave without saying Jazz of Red. Peace out. Jazz of Red. Peace out. Jazz of Red Talk Show, bear with me. Uh, this is Pritchard Shuttle. And I want you to know about this bus. You see that word on top of Pritchard? It's free. These people are riding in AC. You ain't even got to roll a window down. Look at that. We're riding on the, on, uh, all right, I'm going to get the mayor to talk a little bit about this. Uh, we in uh, the great city of Pritchard. All right, when we come back, the mayor going to tell you a little something. Good morning to all you viewers out there in Jazzyland. This is Pritchard Mayor Troy Ephraim. Just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you to Pritchard Shuttle, sponsored by Comfort Coach, and also to so many other business owners out there who came together to support a very traumatic and very difficult situation that came upon us back in April when the city of Pritchard was notified by the city of Mobile that they would begin to cut necessary and vital bus services throughout the city of Pritchard essentially cutting two of the most crucial routes that we had running throughout our city to take our citizens to and from work, to the grocery store, to the doctor's office, or anywhere they needed to be on a daily basis. But we stepped up, decided to come together, and find a plan. So I want to thank those who have decided to support myself as mayor to be able to put the necessary funding in place so that we could keep this shuttle going. Pritchard Shuttle is for free. It picks up all the routes that were taken out, and it takes people to where they need to go on a regular basis. We're very grateful for this opportunity because it really, gets, it really begins to show that when you're able to put a plan together and support the needs of the people and you're doing it for all the right reasons, success and progress will, in fact, come to pass. And we talk about a stronger preacher. That's what a stronger preacher looks like. What do you do when you have a crisis? What do you do when you have a situation that's come upon you that's not right? What do you do when you have issues and concerns beyond your control? Well, you find a way to resolve the issue. We were able to do that. From, Mar from May all the way up to now, we've been able to provide this shuttle at no cost to the citizens to be able to get to and from and not feel left behind and not have to realize that if they're not able to get where they have to go on a daily basis and meet the needs of daily life, that they don't have to look back and say, well, this is because the shuttle will stop. We found a way to resolve this problem. We found a way to meet the needs of the people. But most importantly, they're riding in comfort. They're riding in a shuttle that's getting them where they need to be, connecting with the hub downtown at the GMNO building, and everybody's able to pick up their normal course of life uninterrupted and unimpeded. That's a blessing. But it's leadership, a proven and accomplished. God bless and thank you to Pritchard Shuttle. We'll see you soon on the bus. Take care. We finna show you. We're gonna get on here and get us a little ride. Jazz Red, we love you, peace. Oh. Jazz Red, we just wanna show we on the inside there the driver, and we're gonna get a little ride around here. And uh, Mayor standing up there. This is so nice, man. You got handicap for handicap. All this is free. All this is free. All right, we're going to get a... We're on the 830 shuttle right now. Uh, there's some other riders that are still being picked up. Uh, by the way, the wave is still picking up the Route 5, which is the Crosstown. But we're picking up the Route 16 and the Crosstown to Chickasaw. So at this point, there are a lot of people who don't need it at this point this morning. So right now our bus is empty, but this bus picks up on average anywhere from 15 to 20 people. This this particular route every three every 30 minutes or so. So I expect this bus to be full pretty soon. We've got some people out here waiting on the other routes that are picked up by the way. But again, as I said, it's a massive blessing to be able to have this shuttle as a sort of stopgap for anyone who may not be able to pick up the 16 and the 10 that's not being picked up anymore by the Wave Transit. And again, this, pro this, this program has been a blessing to so many people. It's been free, but it, more importantly, it's comfortable. And again, it keeps you from feeling like you've been left out and you've been left alone. When this situation first hit, there was a lot of pandemonium. There was a lot of panic. There was a lot of concern. We were able to allay those concerns and come up with this plan, put some additional monies into this program, whereby we were able to help make this a possibility come to pass for our people. So it makes a massive difference. Ready to ride, Jazzy. Jazz Red Talk Show. Jazz is getting a little roll on the bus. Y'all seeing the great city of Pritchard. Wow. It's a 
They've done a lot of beautifications around here. It looks nice. It looks nice, Mayor. It really does. Thank you, Jazz. I told them they got to get Jazz some coffee because Jazz got off at 6 o'clock, baby. Oh, look at here. What's this building here? Library. Okay, this is the library of Pritchard. Branch. The main branch library of Pritchard. That looks nice. Oh, wow. Like oh, kids are what is that over there? That's the okay, the housing That's authority the building. building. Y'all probably can't hear him talking now. We up on 45 now. We swinging around. Yep, Jazz getting her ride on the route and got, just got off work, but this is what I want to do. I want to show that it's a bus route all the way out here, 45. Yeah, this is the Pritchard Shelter. Me and the mayor, let me get the mayor. The mayor sitting there. How you liking that ride, mayor? Right yeah, he got his long sleeves on. It's air conditioned, though. <laughs> it's nice right now, Jazz. I'm just grateful to see this and uh, watching the route right now, seeing the people. We got a lady getting ready to get picked up right here, right now. You have to ask yourself, where would she be if not for us being able to have this shuttle right now available for us? So this lady getting on among so many others, this is why this shuttle has been so positive and so Well, beneficial. we got to cut it out, but we have to get permission from her. Jazz the red piece. Go ahead. Uh, Mayor Troy, Ephraim, I, I thank the Lord that you allowed us to have some transportation. Because it's real hard. I'm, I'm not the only one, but it's kind of difficult for, for a lot of us. I, I, my husband passed away in 1991, and I always had an automobile, but I had knee replacement about three years ago. And I don't have a car anymore, so I'm grateful, and we thank you so much. We just pray that things get better and I just pray and ask the Lord to help us when election come that we as a whole will see <laughs> what you are trying to do for us. Amen. Thank you, darling. And, and I, I, I just thank the Lord for it because we could not have this even though it's still a little difficult but I thank the Lord. Something has been nothing at all. all right. God bless you, darling. Jasmine right. Red, we love you. Peace thank out. That's a lady saying she appreciates it. Once again, this is Mayor Troy from here with Jazzy Red on the Jazzy Red Show to all you Jazzy Land people out there. Just want to say, as we concluded our morning, we had an awesome opportunity to take a look at the Pritchett Shuttle, sponsored by Comfort Coach, helping to get people to and from work, the doctor, to the bank, grocery store, places of importance that they perhaps never could have been able to get there if not for the offering of the Comfort Coach and in conjunction with myself as mayor to help provide a way for our people to get to where they need to get on a daily basis. It's been a blessing. Had a young lady stepped on there today and some other people took an opportunity to get the ride for free. So, ladies and gentlemen, look, this is a great opportunity and it's been a blessing for us. But right here we want to make sure you know about the times for the shuttle. We've got Routes 1 and 2. Routes 1 is for the 16 route, which is the 45 cross town. And then here's route number 2, which is the Chickasaw cross town. Here are the times, the pickup locations. As you can see, we pick up every hour on the hour. And in, and in between times, we do 30, 30 minutes in between to make sure we don't miss anyone. If you want to get a copy of the schedule, feel free to come up to my headquarters right here at 309 South Wilson Avenue. Campaign to reelect Mayor Troy Ephraim. Pick up your route schedule, get a time location, and we'll be sure to get you where you need to be on any given day. You need to be there. God bless and keep you. And as Jazzy would say, peace out. God. Jazzy Red Talk Show, and uh, I just left the mayor preacher. Y'all hang with me because I'm holding this. Let me tell you something. Anytime a mayor can meet Magic Johnson and get him to come to Pritchard and to help with financing and business redevelopment and everything look y'all need that man in bear with my hand now y'all need to get him in i just wanted to show that picture magic johnson and mayor troy even jazzeria we love you jazzeria talk show and i'm your host jazzeria um we have an important dignitary here he's going to tell you his name he is uh He's a kindred, as he's called in the Bible, kindred. He's a kindred to the young man, Michael Moore, 
that was uh, murdered. I'm going to say murdered because uh, I have went through it myself. I've had a fiancé that was killed by a police, and I will, I'm going to say murdered. But he's going to give you his name and tell you a little something about him. So y'all get ready. Okay, we're going to do an interview with him. I want you to tell him, tell him your name, young man. Uh, my name is DJ Larry. I am the cousin and spokesman for the Michael Moore family. Um, tell me a little something about you. Uh, I am originally from Pensacola, Florida. So I'm not originally from Mobile, uh, but I am akin to Mobile. I've been here for almost 20 years. Uh, I'm also on the city payroll at some point. I've been a fireman here in the local fire and fire medic here for about 20 years. But I've also uh, been 31 years now and running uh, in the military where I was a, both uh, military police, uh, corrections. I did a little bit of everything, uh, uh, even transportation. did a little bit of everything in the military. So uh, I've, college? I have been to college. Uh, um, I, I'm also a member of the Cap Alpha Psi uh, right. Mobile Alumni Chapter here in Mobile. Uh, This is what I this is what I wanted my viewers. Michael Moore was uh, your kin people. He was a young man, so I wanted to know. This is what Jazz wanted to know. I wanted to know how does it feel? How do it feel or how did it feel? Michael Moore was a young man that was uh not sickly. Um this wasn't a car or an airplane accident. Um, I wanted to. I want you to express how it feel to, for him to just die like that. Just he here one day, and he gone the next. I want you to explain the feeling. Miss Red, first of all, let me let me say thank you for having me uh, on your show. You're uh, I really appreciate uh, giving us a voice, and and what you do. Uh, secondly, to answer that question. Um, it's, it's very hard. It's extremely hard to have a family member who Michael was a cousin of me, but he was a young man in the family. Uh, I've, I've been I'm very close with all the kids and relatives in my family, so uh, him being a, a young man at the age that he was, crossing over, looking for something brighter, something... Uh, to have a future, not even some, to have a future, to make a future for himself. It's hard to see him gone. Uh, as, a, as a man, personally, it's, it's tough. But I look at his mother. I look at his cousins, the younger kids in our family who looked up to him as well and enjoyed him because he was that type of kid. He spent a lot of time when he was with the family playing with his young cousins, playing with all the kids in the family. Uh, I've said before, if anybody else was, if everybody else was tired and didn't want to play with them, they knew Mike was going to be the one. And we would watch him, you know, running around the yard for, for hours with Mike. So um, it, it's extremely tough to lose a family member for any reason. But so suddenly, with, as you stated, no obvious reason but other than being killed, being murdered, it's it's it is horrific. It's a void. It, it is horrific. It the, the mother has, as you say, a void that she will never, ever be able to feel. You know that was her firstborn. Um, she only has two, two sons, wow. and you can't replace an older son. Okay. You can go to the store and buy another gallon of milk once it's gone. You can tear up furniture in your house, go to get new furniture, but you can never replace that blood, that firstborn. So it, it's 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 a tremendous tremendous hardship on her. And I think that's what most of the family is gathering, rallying around to help her through all of this. Uh, again, uh, and additionally, me being around the world in the military, 
traveled this country as a kid, I would have never thought that this family, and knowing this family the way I do, that we would be in the same boat that we see many people across the nation in, and that is the boat of being having a loved one killed by a police officer who is there to protect and serve. Um, and the more and the longer I go through this, the more I find and see, um, you know, it's not just the Trayvon Martins, it's not just uh, with the recent ones, um, Philandro Castillo or Alton Sterling. Uh, it's, it's just not those. There are so many that you don't even know their names wow. because they're not publicized that way, okay. that have been killed in the same manner. And, and, and it's, it needs to stop. Um, you all, you went to a, you went to a rally yesterday. Y'all had a, a rally somewhere else too. So you were rallying around. You're the one doing the spokesperson, um, being a spokesperson, and that's hard. That's hard. When my fiance got killed, I had to uh, sit up, help with picket, you know, picketing and a lot of things, writing letters to the Justice Department. It was just, it's a trying thing. I commend you for being a young man, and and my heart go out to you and from from Jazzy Red talk show viewers and and herself. I know what it feels like. My fiance was killed by an auxiliary policeman in 96. So I know a little bit of what it feels like to have someone today and then they just be gone. And ain't nothing you can do about it right then. They, they are gone. You hang in with that mom though. Is it anything that you would uh, want to say to my viewers, anything you want to say to me? Well, there's plenty I, I definitely would like to say to your viewers. Uh, because of all the rhetoric that's been out in the, the media, um, and I'm not blaming the media, um, but there's been plenty of rhetoric, rhetoric put out. Um, our city top cop uh, has done interviews, and, and his interviews basically was to straight out of the police playbook of victimize the victim uh, and, and to put this information out there and it's my theory that most times that's done to ensure that when and if things go to before a grand jury that the people that they're going to pull from are those in that, that are picking up that local news and they're going to have uh, go into the uh, jury chamber with a predetermined disposition on what they feel happened based off of what the officer or the police chief put out in the press. Um, and what I want people to understand is let, let's really look at the facts of the case because what the police chief put out was only a smokescreen. Uh, let's, let's just really look at the facts. Michael was stopped, a traffic stop. And anyone goes through a traffic stop, they have, they have them plenty of times. Uh, but a traffic stop does not mean loss of life. Don't care what you, you get pulled over for. It should mean loss of life. That's right. Um, facts of the case was the cop pulled him over and for whatever probable cause he utilized or stated that he was pulling him over for once he pulled him over he initiated he, well before he initiated I will say he broke protocol and he initiated a contact with Michael the driver. You have three members in that car but he initiated contact with Michael to get out of the car because he determined or said that it was a stolen car. Well, if you go back to police protocol, if it was a stolen car, it becomes a felony stop. He should have, of course, called for backup and waited until backup arrived yes, instead of one single man trying to take on three individuals in a car. That's police protocol. Everywhere you go, you want to out the police have always, look at most cases around the world, 
they try to outnumber any people they feel that is threatening to them, okay? And that would be the three individuals in the car. So that's the first part of that. He initiated that, he broke protocol. The second part of that is only the officer has stated he saw a weapon on Michael. Uh, we do know he had a cell phone in his hand, but we also know from the numerous witnesses, and we have at least seven different statements from witnesses, uh, one of which is probably the most reliable witness that you could ever have, who is a, has a degree in forensic science, who has worked as a police officer, who is, who is currently a uh, private investigator, has been trained by several police departments, who give a statement saying the young man exited the car, followed all directions, and had his hands up. Why fire? Why fire? Why shoot? Let's, let's move forward. He shoots him one more time, or he shoots him that time, and then uh, Michael falls to the ground. This officer, instead of paying attention to what he was doing, he had enough gall to turn around and start commanding uh, orders to bystanders. He wasn't concerned with the two j kids in the car. He wasn't concerned with them. He was concerned with the two bystanders across the street that were hollering at him, telling him, stop shooting this young man. Don't shoot him. They saw him with his hands up. He's trying to get them out of the area, apparently. Uh, so from there he goes and turns, repositions himself, according to the statements, and fires at Michael while he's lying on the ground. My question is, why has anyone not determined by just those statements alone that this officer should be charged with something it should not have to go to a grand jury the DA has the power and I do understand there's three different ways to get someone charged and in court and the DA can do it directly so with that and, and I want it to be known to your, to your viewers these statements are not just in our hands as the family I, I don't have these statements but the police department has those statements. The DA has the statements. The FBI has the statements, as well as the Department of Justice. We all still say, or still hear them saying, hey, investigation, investigation is ongoing. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We don't, we don't let you all chew on that a little bit. Thank you for uh, coming out and letting me interview you. Know, let me interview you. I thank you for clearing up some stuff. So I hope you all have gotten something. And uh, we're just going to say that we your condolence to your family. And uh, if you uh, need jazz or anything, please call. I want you to tell my viewers, God bless you. Jazzy, Miss Red, I, I thank you for having us. Uh, I really appreciate this. And to your viewers, I thank all of you who listen to Mrs. Red's uh weekly show. Uh, I hope that at least just the, those few initial facts will make you think because there's a lot more to this. Those That's just the initial part of it. Uh, but I thank you. I, I want to also give thanks to all those who have supported the family thus far and have prayed for the family thus far. Continue to pray for us. Continue to, to support us because we're going to continue to fight this. Without saying, Jazz Red, peace out, but I want to say this and lay it on your heart. What if it was your child? Swing better, better, swing better, better, swing. Swing better, better, swing better, better, swing. Swing better, better, swing better, better, swing. Swing me up to the bucket. Swing better, better, swing
I can live drunk. When I step to the plate, they call me the great. Hit a grand slam from state to state. I just how to do it in a quick and less. We'll bring in the heat, we'll bring in the cheddar. If it didn't, they should have known better. But why is the name? Oh, it's my egg game. My pockets getting better, I ain't good in change. Swing better, better, swing better, better.